Hello, my name is John Pawsey. I'm a farmer from Suffolk. Uh, our farm is called Shimpling Park Farms and we're about eight miles south of Bears and Edmonds. Uh, we converted our farm to organic production uh, just over 20 years ago. I was concerned about the amount of pesticides we were using in our, on our farm and also the state of our soils. And so now we try and farm in a way uh, that is as nature friendly as possible. So I was inspired to plant our agroforestry project by uh, Martin Wolf, who farmed at Wakelands uh, near Fressingfield in Suffolk. And I'd been going backwards and forwards to his farm for, for over the last 20 years and, um, and always for some reason resisting um, putting in something here because you know, you can always think of the reasons why you shouldn't be uh, doing something. You know, what's going to happen with the drains? Uh, is it going to make your fields less productive? So on and so forth. Um, and unfortunately, uh, about two years ago, um, uh, Martin died. And, and I just thought I'd just got to get on with it. So we planted this system uh, that you can see behind me now. So we started um, planting the trees just before Christmas. And it was really um, my family and I that planted them. So we started before Christmas and we finished um, just after Christmas. And we planted um, three fields, uh, which total about uh, 50 acres. And they are really planted with species um, that are very uh, familiar on a sort of heavy land farm and really mimic the species that are in our triple SI woodland uh, called Alfeton Wood. Um, and we really felt by doing that, we were going to be planting something that would, would inherently uh, do well on our soil type. So the idea behind an agroforestry system uh, is uh, that we are we've planted these trees in sort of lines um, in the middle of the field, and they're planted at 36 meter intervals, uh, which means that we've got plenty of room to farm in between the trees. Uh, we've also left the uh, the headlands, the outside of the field, without trees as well, so we can still f f farm the field as normal. And I suppose uh, the aim of it is to keep the field as productive as possible, uh, still growing uh, the crops that we normally grow in our rotation up and down in between the trees um, but the trees don't actually interfere with the productivity of the field um, what they do interfere with though is the uh, overall productivity of what this field can do for nature because we've got a an, an annual crop growing in the in the um, in the field uh, which runs along our, our normal rotation which includes grass lays for building fertility and grazing animals on and then four cash crops uh, but but also it brings in all that biodiversity into the lines of the trees where we planted a wildflower mix uh, but everything that goes with them um, having trees on your farm just brings all that nature into the middle of the field. And so ultimately, uh, at the end of the, the lifetime of the trees, because the trees are a crop, you know, we will be harvesting them at some point during their lifetime. And of course, they will just come on tap in different uh, stages. So the hazel will be coppice possibly and used in our wood chip um, boilers. The cherry will come earlier, probably after sort of 30, 40 years, and hopefully will be sold as timber. And then, you know, later on, you know, species like oak uh, will be sort of much later and will be also be harvested. And as we're, we're harvesting these trees, I can see that they're going to be replanted. So sort of just offering this sort of, you know, uh, changes in dynamic of diversity within the tree rows as we go through um, the life cycle of the trees that we've planted. One of the reasons for planting the trees on 36 meters is because um, Sam Morgan, who was the wonderful chap who helped me uh, design this scheme, uh, calculated when the trees get to their full height, uh, then they will start impacting on the yield of the crops. But then at that point, they will be harvested. But also the other thing is, that, you know, having a agroforestry system with sort of broad leafed uh, trees and ones that are typically found in this area is it's going to look in incredibly beautiful. And one of the reasons for choosing the site is because it's very near to Shimpling Park farmyard, uh, which is where we have a converted barn and we do lots of school visits and, and, and visits for farmers. And so I think it's going to add another attraction when you come to see us at Shimpling Park Farm. Also, um, you know, we want to encourage people to come here and, and camp here as well. So I can see that it's also going to add to a sort of, you know, the diversion, diversity of the farm's income as well over a period of time. Having uh, grass lays uh, for grazing sheep on in our organic rotation obviously also sequesters a lot of carbon. So we're doing that anyway on the farm, but um, you know, having trees in alleys uh, across the farm uh, sequesters even more carbon. So that's going to be a huge benefit as far as I'm concerned, especially if we start rolling out the agroforestry system across the rest of the farm.
The other benefit we're going to get from our agroforestry is, of course, for our grazing animals, our sheep. Um, you know, we've got sort of quite large arable fields here in Suffolk. Our average field size is about 25 acres. And sheep are always trying to find some kind of shade from a, a, a you know a hedgerow tree or a tallish hedge around the farm. But with the trees now in the middle of the fields, it's going to give them the perfect opportunity to get some shade during the day. And I think that's going to have a huge benefit to their uh, welfare, but also um, how productive they are on the farm as well. So what lessons have I learned uh, from plant, planting uh, this scheme? Well, uh, to be honest, it's, it's just too early to tell because, you know, we've just planted them. Uh, they're all still alive after the winter. We had a very wet winter, so they were well watered in. But of course, we do get some very dry springs now. And especially in East Anglia, a more of a continental climate. We have about 650 millimetres of rain a year, which is, is, is low compared to other parts of the country. So keeping them alive is going to be uh, a challenge, I'm sure. Um, also, just keeping them... Uh, managed well as uh, for, for a timber product uh, I think is is going to be a a challenge um, and and any advice that I would really give anybody who's thinking about it I, I my advice would be just to get out there if you're thinking about it just get out there and do it as soon as possible because these things take a long time to grow and you know if you do them in your 20s and 30s you're going to see it as a you know pretty much mature agroforestry system um, and that's why I sort of regret leaving it for so long having met Martin 20 years ago and have only just done it uh, because if I'd done it when he started planting his we would be looking at a very different scene now with all the benefits that agroforestry uh, can bring to our large East Anglian fields. So thank you very much for listening to me um, rabbit on about our agroforestry system uh, and you know I really look forward to welcoming you to Shimpling Park Farm to see in its early stages to see in its mid stages and and hopefully uh, if, you're, if I'm still alive uh, come and see some mature trees at some point and also bring your tent we're gonna have camping so Come to Shimpling Park Farm and see what we're doing uh, and, and hopefully uh, you'll go away and do something similar yourself.